I am Stephen at home. I'm here where I live and work at the Turkey Song Experimental Homestead and I do all kinds of cool stuff here and one of those cool things is growing apple trees by a system known as inner stem grafting. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. This video is going to be in three parts. The first part will be about what inner stem grafting is and some of the advantages and disadvantages. So that'll help you decide if it's a good fit for you or not. The second part will be me showing you how I graft the trees in one year. A lot of sources say that it takes two years to graft an inner stem tree, but that is simply not true. The third part will be caring for the newly grafted tree and then planting it in its final position. Inner stems are occasionally known by the archaic name double worked. So if you're looking for old information on inner stem trees, look for double working or double worked trees. They're composed of three genetic parts, a root system, an interstem, which goes here, and then finally the variety that you want to grow, which goes on top. Most people, including myself, are interested in using interstem grafting to dwarf trees. This is Bud 9. It's a dwarfing rootstock, and the way it dwarfs trees is that it just has low vigor in general. That means the root system is also weak. My diagonal cordon trees over here are apple trees planted on 18 inch centers, and I only want about 7 feet tall. So I use Bud 9 on that, but they're in a garden bed type of situation where they get plenty of food and water and they're really pampered and well taken care of. This is a variety of apple called Sweet 16. If I graft it onto this M111 rootstock, it's going to make almost a full size tree. I may not want a full size tree, but this rootstock is great. It's drought tolerant, it's resistant to you know standing water and heavy soils, and it's also resistant to woolly aphids. So all around, it's a, this is a, just a great rootstock. And let's say I want a smaller tree so I could graft instead onto this bud 9 rootstock. So that's going to give me a tree about 8 feet tall, which is sort of what I'm shooting for with these trees back here. Um, but there's a problem with this, which is that this wimpy root system is just not going to perform that well. Not only will it not be as good at foraging for food and water, but it literally will be too wimpy to hold the tree up. So the tree will have to be staked for life or it could fall over in high winds or just, you know, with a really heavy fruit load, it could just start to creep and literally fall over. So by putting the three together, we have a pretty great solution. We have this root system that we want with all its great properties. We have the inner stem dwarf here to choke down the total size of the tree. And then we put the variety on want, uh, we want on top to get the fruit that we want. So we have the small tree with big roots and that's pretty cool. This is a King David interstem tree. It's on M111 and Bud 9. It's about five years old and it's done quite well. Uh, last year it survived probably the worst drought that anyone can remember and it did it with no supplemental water at all. So even in a normal summer, we just have really dry summers. So the spring's dropping, dropping, dropping through the season. I just don't have the water to lavish on fruit trees. I need it for the garden. And in general, I just try to conserve water because there's other things downstream that use it. Also, um, look at the anchorage on this tree is excellent. And I think that speaks volumes about how superior this root system is to say like a bud nine root system. I can't quantify overall how much better it is. Um, maybe a little later I'll have a better idea. I'm only five years in, but I can say for sure that the anchorage on this tree and its performance overall under these conditions are much better than they would be on a straight bud nine. Now I don't want to imply that this root system is equal to the, an M111 root system with a full size tree above it. That full size tree is going to be able to also support a, a larger root system. The other thing to notice here is look at all those fruit spurs. These trees will come into bearing very early, um, usually the second year actually and uh, they bear heavy crops, they bear, they tend to bear large fruit, and they come into bearing much, much earlier than standard sized trees. The trees that I put on M111, they usually take about six or seven years to start getting going with the fruiting. And again, these will often produce a crop in the second year. One problem you'll see mentioned a lot is the increased tendency to suckering for inner stem trees. As you can see the suckers on here growing from the M111 rootstock. Less than half of my trees have suckers, but definitely more of them have suckers than if they were on straight bud nine or straight M111. So that is an issue. 
Apparently, if you plant the graft union below the ground, the bud nine will sprout roots and suppress suckering. So I didn't do that, but I should have, and that's my only real regret with these trees so far. Suckering is also the only real drawback that I've seen that's really worth mentioning. The trees won't live as long, um, but that's pretty much true straight across for dwarf trees anyway. So you're really weighing that against all these benefits. You know, you get a tree that fruits really quickly. You can reach almost everything by hand or by standing on a bucket. So, you know, no ladders required. And you can fit a lot of varieties in a small space. Plus, you can grow more fruit in a smaller space than you can with standard sized trees. So lots of benefits and uh, not that many drawbacks. If you want dwarf trees, and you don't want to have to pamper them as much and don't mind maybe a few more suckers, I think that's a pretty good way to go.